This is Dan to be Severn, the only triple crown champion in the UFC history. And you're watching the Sports Courier. You better watch, otherwise, I know where you live. Hi everybody, this is Fred Ricciani of thesportscourier.com. I'm here with h and Vice President and MMA legend, Mr. Guy Messier. How are you doing, sir? Good, how you doing, brother? Good, so lots changed since uh, we interviewed back in January. h and particularly Inside MMA, now has access to UFC events. Talk about what that means for h and Well, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I mean, you know, the UFC is the 800-pound gorilla in this division. Having uh, access to them, uh, a much closer access for news, media, for uh, you know the clips and things like that just helps us refine our show to be you know to be honest I mean we were the top you know news show in uh, MMA now we are uh, by far the top we are heads and shoulders above everyone else now that we have that uh, access and what took so long for that to uh, come to fruition I know that I remember I saw on the third anniversary show inside MMA Mark Cuban said he had a little bit of differences with him and Dana White uh, what were some of those differences you think well you know I mean uh, just it's just business oriented stuff you know uh, you know that. Uh, you know, UFC is protecting their brand and uh, they do a good job on it, you know. And uh, so I think uh, more than anything, you know, Mark got an opportunity to show, you know, we're not here to, you know, yeah. we're not gorilla hunting. So, yeah. uh, you know, we're, so we actually, you know, and uh, I think it showed him that uh, we're actually u more useful to him than we are, you know, not, you know, being, being an <laughs> adversary. We're more, you know, we're more ally than adversary. Absolutely. And uh, let's talk about your uh, new partnership with uh, Mark Burnett and uh, King of the Cage. What's that meant for you guys? Well, that partnership ended. No, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. We're, we're not with King of the Cage anymore. Um, sorry to hear that. No, that's okay. It's the way it goes. Um, we, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where, uh, you know, some, we just couldn't kind of get together on certain business uh, ideas of, of what we wanted versus the product that they wanted. And so that was... Uh, you know, that's where it ended. You know, good luck to them. I mean, good King of the Cage has been around for a while. They, they've got been a solid brand, so I'm sure that they'll, they're going to be just fine. Yeah. And I remember when we talked back in January, you talked about how uh, fighters are in need of some, a lot of fighters need good management. They need a backup plan yeah, or, or whatnot. Uh, look at some fighters uh, today. A lot of guys, unfortunately, uh, your former teammate, Ken Shamrock, you know, guys like Jens Pulver continuing to fight despite, you know, seeing being past their prime. I mean, do you feel like a lot of fighters don't have enough of a backup plan these days and they pull all their eggs in one basket? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's not a question. I mean, we, we, most of these guys uh, go in here because they love what they do. Um, I know I did, but I also tapered it at a very young age because uh, the way I grew up, you know, we, uh, you know, I grew up uh, rather economically strained. Yeah. So uh, I, I knew that things uh, didn't always last the way you wanted to do. So I was uh, pretty cognizant of it. But even, to be honest, even as you know, well aware of it that I was, I, I was, uh, you know, if I had to do it again, I would have prepared myself a little differently. But uh, what I really would love to, you know, by any of you guys listening, you know, is that they, you, you got to have a backup plan. I know it breaks my heart sometimes to hear about kids that quit school uh, to become an MMA fighter. I'm like, no, they got plenty of time. They're not even in their physical prime yet. You know, get your college education, get the opportunity to do stuff. You know, I felt at times uh, trapped in my business. You know, doing, you know, as a fighter. You know, uh, you know, I, I love doing it, but there were times I'd want to take a break. But where was I going to get paid? You know? Exactly. And so I, I would say that, uh, yeah, it needs. Be. Guys need to be looking out for their future on all levels. And, and as their MMA fighters, max out your brand as an athlete. Figure out how to make the most of being a, being a, a, an MMA athlete. I mean, everything, because there's a lot of money made in this without having to get punched in the face for it, too. Sponsorships. So, you know, sponsorships. And, and, oh, yeah. yeah you know, Mr. Miller here, yeah, who's, who's, who's coming here and signing autographs for us, and and, 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 be, and being a big celebrity, things like that. I mean, you know, he needs to, you know, work, you know, work towards that. These are things that these guys need to look look forward to doing. Ma you know, mastering their brand, making it last something past, uh, you know, the day that they're done fighting. And do you feel like a lot of fighter and fighters have control of the rights? I mean, we know Rainy Couture; he has the deal with EA. You know, it's the only guy not to sign on for UFC Undisputed. There's the whole AKA UFC video game controversy. Do you think fighters? Particularly in the big leagues, so the Strike Force, uh, UFC, do you think they have enough control over their own brand, or do you think that as well, time keep, goes on, they need yeah. to keep control? Of okay. the brand. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times what they think is, uh, 
I'll be honest. That's a lot. They're gonna be like, they're gonna be so excited that somebody wants their, you know, opinion about something, wants their likeness about something that they don't really care. Because that, how cool it would be to be on a, a video game. Yeah. Uh, they don't realize that that's actually, uh, you know, a potential revenue stream. Of course, and Dream got a nice partnership with them. They've run some hard financial times lately. What are your thoughts on them? What's the future like for Dream? Well, from what we understand, Dream has uh, got a big insurgent of about two hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah. Uh, that's what we heard. Uh, let's hope that's the case. Um, I, I think they're fine. You know, we, uh, our CEO uh, Andrew Simon, uh, had spent about three weeks over there going through all. He, he was at the Dream Show, the K1 Show, yeah. K1 Korea Show. He's all over. He was, at, and uh, you know, basically he was, uh, you know, uh, feeling, uh, feeling the waters. And he's confident that things are moving forward with Dreams and, and K1. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, if he's confident, then I'm confident. Yeah. And uh, you work with the legendary Boss Root, and you know, you two were once one opponents. We are, you are good friends. Yes. Uh, a lot of guys lately in the news, particularly more famously John Bones Jones, said that even if his teammate Rashad Evans won the light heavyweight title he wouldn't fight him and he'd be content being at number two you fought boss like you guys you know, being friendly with each other do you feel like teammates need to put their friendship aside and know when it comes down to business no in MMA? I personally don't okay. I mean, me and Boss were real good friends. We, they were going to have us fight again because the fight was uh, so close between me and him, and uh, we refused. Mm. You know, uh, we were just going to do it. Uh, I would not fight uh, one of my teammates. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know the structure of their friendship. Yeah. I don't know the structure of their training, so it's hard for me to sit there and make a, a, an assessment. But if he feels that he's close enough to be, with, you know, that, that he's got that close of a friend, then it's his decision. Because it is not just business. Much as people as it goes in there, you know. A bit differently, right? Yeah, fighting's a little different. Fighting's not like uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's not like somebody yeah. got a different, con you know, a, you know, banking contract. Yeah. I mean, it's a little different. So, I think that it's up to each each individual athlete and how they feel about it. So, you know, for them to to, to be forced to fight that, I'm not sure if that would be uh, something I would want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to fight boss again. We're just too good of friends. I just couldn't, I couldn't do that. Uh, but other people don't have a problem with it. Do I think athletes need to be forced to do that? Absolutely not. I think it needs to be up to their own personal decision on that. Mm -hmm, of course. And last question. What's next for HGF Fights and what's next for Guy Mesger? What's next for HGF Fights? And yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the immediate uh, uh, thing for me is to get something uh, uh, like hot tea because I'm freezing in here. Yeah. That would be the immediate uh, immediate future. But we're in, in things. HGNet's just growing up. I'm growing with them. I, you know, it's uh, we, we, we now, uh, especially with the um, inside, with the um, Access to the UFC. I think it's. I think hands down, we're going to have the best news show out there. We have the number one uh, MMA programming period when it comes out there. We, we show more live MMA and than anybody else. Uh, the fans need to let let us know that that's what they want. They keep doing that because that's what we do. It's our number one program in the station. I, I can, you know, I'm working very hard to make sure it remains the number one programming. Um, and uh, you know, Guy Mesger is just uh, along for the ride. Yeah. Well, Guy. Thank you so much. Great job as always. Thanks, Thank you.